بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد الأمين ومسك الختام لسائر الأنبياء والمرسلين وبعد My dearest brothers and sisters welcome to another episode and inshallah in this episode we are going to be speaking about our everlasting life This dunya, the place that we are in it is our temporary place of abode it is our temporary residence our real journey our real life begins brothers and sisters from the moment that we close our eyes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-insan which is also known as surah al-dahr allah jalla wa ala he informs us and he says ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim hal ata ala al-insani hinun min ad-dahri lam yakun shay'an madhkura a time passed in our lives where none of us were worthy of mention. A period passed where none of us were worthy of mention. Allah Jalla wa Ala decreed and He decided, and our mothers conceived. Inna khalaqna, Allah Jalla wa Ala says that we created you from mixed fluids. The fluid from the man and the fluid from the woman, when it came together, the embryonic stages began. The embryonic stages began and stage after stage we developed in the mother's womb and after 36 or 40 weeks the mother goes through difficulty hardship upon hardship as Allah says in the Quran Wahnan ala wahnin, hardship upon hardship ay mushakkatan ala mushakkatin, difficulty upon difficulty the embryonic stages began we weren't worthy of mention Allah decreed the mothers conceived the process began the different stages of the development of the baby after 36 or 40 weeks all of a sudden we enter this dunya we come out from the wombs of our mother and we enter this temporary place of abode which is known as dunya unfortunately many of us we think that this is our everlasting life the way we live our life the time and effort that is exhausted in this dunya it seems like this is our everlasting home but the reality is brothers and sisters that our everlasting journey will begin from the moment that we close our eyes the everlasting life is known as haya abadiya sarmadiya everlasting life there is no ending eternal life allah jalla wa ala has prepared the bounties the beauty for us in the hereafter ma la aynun ra'at wa la udhunun sami'at for those who will be amongst the muflihun, the successful, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, when he spoke about Jannah, he says, مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطْرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ No eyes have ever seen what awaits for the people in Jannah. وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ No ears have ever heard of all of those good things that are waiting for us in Jannah. وَلَا خَطْرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ And no one is truly able to comprehend, no mind can comprehend the bounties that are waiting for us in Jannah. It is only for those who understand that the hereafter is the everlasting life. And this is the temporary place of abode. And they detach themselves from materialism, from dunya, this competition in this dunya, the greed in this dunya. And they really exhaust their effort and energy in trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they can attain the beautiful Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the people of Jannah. Brothers and sisters, after the 36 or 40 weeks, when the baby comes to this dunya, the mother goes through so much difficulty, but the baby comes to this dunya and the very first thing the baby does is cry. But the mother who went through all of that difficulty, when she hears the crying of the baby, 
all of a sudden the 36 weeks and 40 weeks of pain and difficulty that she had to endure the difficulty that she has to go through all of a sudden that is all removed because of the crying of the baby the sweetness of the crying has all of a sudden removed the pain of the mother Allahu Akbar take a moment and think about that this is something that cannot be felt this is not something that is tangible this is not something that a person can truly comprehend except for the woman who has given the birth a mother will truly be able to comprehend the difficulty that she has gone through and the excitement that she has when she hears the crying of the baby but what does the father do the father picks up this baby and the very first thing he utters in the ears of this baby is Allahu Akbar take a moment and think about that I want you to digest this information I want you to really contemplate ponder and reflect upon what I am saying that the mother goes through all of this difficulty and then when this baby comes to this dunya the mother is excited she has no pain anymore why because now she sees her healthy baby in her hand and she says alhamdulillah she thanks Allah with sincerity devotion humility but the father utters Allahu Akbar in the ear why is it that he doesn't utter anything else from the 114 surahs of the Quran he doesn't read any surah he doesn't do any other adhkar remembrance of Allah but the very first thing he utters in the ear of the baby is Allahu Akbar brothers and sisters the father he utters in this newborn innocent baby's ear that God is the greatest Allah is the greatest why did he utter those words because it is only possible that this baby came to this dunya because of the will and decree of Allah because Allah made it happen the embryonic stages that the mother went through month after month this baby developed gradually on the 120th day the soul enters the fetus who made that happen who is behind all of this who has systemized this who is the one who is behind this function and this system هذا خلق الله فأروني ماذا خلق الذين من دونه Allah says this is the creation of Allah show me Allah brings forward a challenge show me any other creation who is able to do this the beauty that we see when we go to the countryside and the green the green we see the scenery we see the mountains we see when we see nature and the beauty we are in a state of shock how beautiful all of that is هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ فَأَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ Allah says this is the creation of Allah bring to me anyone who is able to create this this is the very first words we say Allahu Akbar Allah is the greatest because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brought this baby to this temporary dunya we weren't worthy of mention هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِي فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا Allahu Jalla wa'ala He is the one who brought us to this dunya We thank Allahu Jalla wa'ala for choosing us to be Muslims We thank Him for choosing us to be His servants We thank Him for choosing us to be amongst His slaves who acknowledge and understand our purpose of existence and where our everlasting life is we ask Allah and we invoke to him to give us the tawfiq to prioritize our akhirah to give us the tawfiq to understand the importance of our everlasting life not this temporary place of abode Hafiz ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi he says كيف يكون عاقلا من باع الجنة بشحوة الساعة how can this man be wise how can this woman be a woman of intellect the person who gives up their jannah for a peace in the life of this world brothers and sisters rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says allah created this dunya and to allah this dunya is not even worth the wing of a fly but yet the creation of allah you and i we live our lives in such a way or such a fashion that we own this dunya yet the one who owns it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him this dunya is has no value the value of the wing of a fly if he wants he could destroy it he can create more creation remove us and bring more creation Allahu Akbar but the way we live our lives 
الهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون الله جل وعلا says in سورة التكاثر there is this competition we are competing with one another not in good deeds not in pleasing Allah but trying to attain wealth trying to attain that which is temporary over that which is permanent Allah جل وعلا he brought us to this dunya الله أخرجكم من بطون أمهاتكم لا تعلمون شيئا وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة لعلكم تشكرون الله جل وعلا brought us to this dunya brothers and sisters and he gave the ability to hear he gave us the ability to see and he also gave us the ability to contemplate and think and reflect we use all of this brothers and sisters to acknowledge our real purpose what is our purpose of existence here and where are we heading? Brothers and sisters, when we depart from this dunya, the very last words that are going to be uttered while we are in front of the Imam, the janazah is being prayed, is Allahu Akbar. What's interesting is when we first came to this dunya, what was the very first word we heard? Allahu Akbar. And what is the very last word we're going to hear? The Imam is going to say Allahu Akbar when we are placed in front of the Imam, the janazah is being performed. So from my birth to my death, my journey is from Allahu Akbar to Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. God is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. At the end of this journey, it is not just about me. It is about my Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Minha khalaqnakum wa minha nu'idukum. مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِي Allah جل وعلا says we created you from soil and you're going to soil and we will raise you from this soil again Allahu Akbar we're going back to Allah جل وعلا this is something that is guaranteed for each one of us brothers and sisters so while we are on this journey let us not forget it is مَزْرَأَةٌ لِلْآخِرَةِ it is a place for investment for the hereafter Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala, he used to say, الدُّنْيَا دَارُ عَمَلْ وَالْآخِرَةُ دَارُ جَزَاء فَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْمَلْ هُنَا نَدِمَ هُنَا This place is a place of investment. The Prophet Sallallahu says, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ السِّتِينَ إِلَى السَّبْعِينَ The average lifespan of a person is 60 to 65 years. If you have not reached that, make dua Allah gives you hayatan tayyiba and you reach that. And if you've exceeded more than 65 years, you are experiencing the bonus period. Repent to Allah. Come back to Allah. Do all of those things that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The life is very short. Average lifespan is 60 to 65 years. But we have become so busy with this dunya, spending a huge amount of our time trying to attain a peace in the life of this world. Trying to uh, build our mansions in this dunya, forgetting our everlasting life. Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran regarding this dunya and how short our journey is. As Imam Ahmed, what did he say? A dunya daru amal, a place of an investment. Well, akhirah to daru jaza, and akhirah is the place of reward. Faman lam yamal huna, the person who doesn't exhaust their energy here, nadima hunak, they will be in a state of regret, remorse in the hereafter. But it is too late. So while we are in this dunya, let us be wise. As Omar radiallahu anhu says, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Evaluate yourself. Do self-criticism. Ask yourself every day, is my current day better than my previous day? Am I, how is my relationship with Allah? How can I improve myself? Ask yourself those important questions. And this is how you will be able to really bring a change to yourself and your relationship with Allah Jalla wa ala. This journey that we are on, it's our temporary place of abode. The life of Barzakh is transit, and then when we are raised, then the real life begins. Even though the life of Barzakh is where the Qiyamah begins for a person. Before we get there, this 60 or 65 years that we are experiencing according to the hadith, Allah Jalla wa ala describes this journey in three verses in the Quran. من نطفة خلقه فقدر ثم السبيل يسر ثم أماته فأقبر الله جل وعلا من نطفة خلقه فقدر He created us from mixed fluids and he preordained for us our destiny and then he made us or our journey in this dunya very easy من نطفة خلقه فقدر ثم السبيل يسر 
And then we will surely all have to taste death. That is something that is guaranteed for each one of us. The, the most agreed upon matter, a universal agreement is whether you're a person of faith or no faith, that every person will have to taste death. Our belief is that when I close my eyes, my everlasting journey begins. This place is my temporary place of abode. The poet, he says in a poem, Al-hayatu ma hiya illa qissa qasira Min turab ala turab ila turab Thumma hisab fa thawab aw iqab What is the life of this world except a short story? Min turab, we came from soil Ala turab, we are on soil Ila turab, we are going back to soil Thumma hisab fa thawab aw iqab After that, it is the reckoning, the calculation And then we stand before Allah And we are either successful Or we are either in a state of loss Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullahu ta'ala he says Ya ibn Adam innama anta ayyam kullama dhahaba yawmun dhahaba ba'duk Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullahu ta'ala the great scholar who passed away 110 Hijri he says Ya ibn Adam O children of Adam innama anta ayyam surely you are just a few days in Arabic language when the word innama is used adatu hasrin it gives the benefit of exclusivity to restrict something. Anta ayyam. You're just a few days. Kullama dhahaba yawmun. When a day passes, dhahaba ba'duk. A portion of your life has disappeared. With every breath that we release, with every moment that passes, remember a fraction of your life has disappeared. You will not be able to repeat that. You will not be able to relay that. You will not be able to rehearse that. A fraction of your life has disappeared. So Go towards Allah Jalla wa'ala. Fafirru ilallah. Come back to Allah Jalla wa'ala. And do all of those things that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave a legacy behind. Leave a legacy that will be a source of happiness in the hereafter. A beacon of light for you. Do good. Help others. Do good deeds. Do social work. Do charity work. Help the poor and the needy. Help the homeless. Help your kith and kin. Help your relatives. Help every single human being out there, regardless of their faith, regardless of their skin color, regardless of the uh, cultural difference that we may have, regardless of what part of world we are from. Allah Jalla has created us for a purpose, and that is to serve one another, help one another, and leave an am amazing legacy behind. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi Wasallam, upon occasion, he is with his companions. And the hadith mentions, Murra alayhi bi A deceased person is being taken in front of him. Janaza here means that a dead person is being taken so that they will be buried very soon. The Prophet ﷺ, when he saw the dead person being carried to the grave so that they can be buried, the Prophet ﷺ, addressing his companions, he says, Mustarihun wa mustarahun minhu. This person is resting or people are resting from him. The companions, they didn't understand. Ya Rasulullah, what do you mean by that? Wamal mustarihu, wamal mustarahu minhu. Ya Rasulullah, what do you mean that this person is resting or other people are resting from him? It's either one. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-abdul mu'min yastarihu min nasabid dunya ay min ta'bid dunya. The believing man or woman, the sincere, devout, humble, good, committed, dedicated, Muslim, man or woman, يَسْتَرِيهُ مِنْ نَصَبِ dunya. They have departed from this temporary place of abode. Now they are happy because they have embarked on their real journey, the everlasting life. وَالْعَبْدُ fajir And the sinner, the person who didn't care about salah, the person who didn't care about akhirah, the person who didn't care about his neighbors, the person who didn't care about their friends and their relatives and others, they were selfish. All they cared about was money, 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 wealth, bank balance, cars, big property. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَالْعَبْدُ الْفَاجِرْ يَسْتَرِيهُ مِنْهُ الْعِبَادِ وَالْبِلَادِ وَالشَّجَرُ وَالدَّوَابِ The Prophet sallallahu says, when the sinner departs from this world, the whole country is happy. Nature is happy. The trees, the mountains, the leaves, the rivers, everyone is happy. The people are happy. Everyone is happy that this person has departed. Brothers and sisters, 
if we lived for 60 years and we couldn't live a life worthy of living, we couldn't leave a legacy behind, what is the purpose of this life? That is not a life that is something good to mention. But you live 60 years, 70 years, and you couldn't live a life worthy of living. Brothers and sisters, let us improve ourselves. Let us live in this dunya as if this is our temporary abode. Let us not detach ourselves totally from the dunya. I'm not saying let's go to the mountains and worship Allah and separate ourselves from society. All I'm saying is detach yourself from the dunya so much so that you own things but the dunya doesn't own you. So you may have a car, you may have a house, you may have a good job, you may have a good salary, you may be going holidays, you're enjoying the bounties in this dunya but don't become so obsessed that the dunya owns you and all you think about is money, money, money because you're not taking anything with you when you close your eyes. And to conclude, I want to mention this hadith we find in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثَةٌ يَتْبَعُهُ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ Rasul sallallahu says when a person passes away, three things follow them to the grave. Number one, their family. Number two, their wealth. And number three, their good deeds. فَيَرْجِعُوا إِثْنَانْ وَيَبْقَى مَا هُوْ وَاحِدٌ Two things will come back and one thing the person who has passed away will take with them. What are those two things? Are you able to take your money with you? Are you able to take your Mercedes with you? Are you able to take your Range Rover or BMW with you? You can't take any of that with you. Rasul Sallam says, فَيَرْجِعُوا إِثْنَانْ Your family will come back when they bury you. Your wealth is going to come back. The only thing you're going to take with you is your good deeds. Brothers and sisters, let us work relentlessly with commitment, diligence, commitment and dedication in improving our a'mal, our good deeds, so that we can please Allah and return. Allahu Jalla wa ala will grant us Jannah bi ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati lahum jannatun tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. Allah Jalla wa ala promises Jannah below which rivers are flowing. We don't want to give up our Jannah for this dunya. May Allah Jalla wa ala give us the tawfiq to understand this. Inshallah, we hope to see you in our next program. May Allah bless you, keep you all well. May Allah protect all of us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.